God, do I actually sound like that? Do I always do that thing with my hands? Can you relate to this after seeing or hearing yourself on video? Yeah, you and everybody else out there. But don't worry because today we're gonna walk through how to be confident on camera and even though you might feel a little insecure, the audience will have no idea. We know that video is king and sometimes putting yourself out there is such a challenge, but we also know that people connect with brands that are humanized and break down that digital wall of just being a brand and show us the people we're actually supporting. We are looking for connection out there. I've used these takeaways to help C-sweet middle-aged people be on camera and be confident giving presentations. And I've also used it with teenagers who are just naturally awkward and feel weird when they know that they're gonna be presenting to their classes, but they work. So trust me, let's jump right into it. If you want more videos like this on how to bring your personal brand or your business's brand into the real world through digital, then come on and make sure to subscribe to my channel, ring the bell so you get a notification every time that I drop a new video, and those are coming out weekly on Wednesdays. Whether you're putting together video content simply for Instagram stories that's gonna vanish within 24 hours, or you're putting together an entire tutorial series for new staff members, or maybe it's for a big board meeting, it can be really nerve wracking to put yourself out there. It's so bizarre. We're so comfortable walking into a boardroom and speaking about the things that we know. We're so comfortable when a customer comes into our restaurant to give them a table and small talk with them. But for some reason, when there's a boundary of a screen between us, we all clam up a bit. You feel a little bit exposed and vulnerable. Well, today we're gonna to go through exactly how to get around that. The main thing I want you to remember about being on video is that it's like a muscle. The more you work it, the stronger it's going to get. So if you're someone who wants to incorporate more video content into your strategy, a great way to do this is to practice videos and just never post them. So talk about things that you would talk about, talk about random things that you would never post about. Just get comfortable talking in front of the camera and speaking to it like it's a friend or a customer or a client or your dog, I don't know. But just try and break down that wall and practice honestly does make perfect. The more you do it, save it, watch it, give yourself some constructive feedback and do it again. The more and more you do it, the stronger you will get and the more comfortable you will be doing it. The first thing I'm going to say is come prepared. When I say that, I mean, think about what the main messaging is. Think about the goal. Again, I'm harping, but think about the goal of what this piece of video content is trying to achieve. It can be something silly, like just telling a joke to your audience to you know, freshen things up a bit, or maybe you're actually asking for something or announcing something, but just come prepared with exactly what that video content is and why you're doing it. Step two is to make sure that you come with a script, but one that is only in point form. There's nothing worse than having someone sit there and read something verbatim to you. Think about the tips that you want to say and then just speak to that point. The same way you would, again, if you were sitting in a boardroom or with a client or customer. It's so easy for us to know those things. If we go into a meeting with notes, we can then have the conversation. Same thing goes for video. It's personal. The reason people like videos is because I'm actually talking to you right now. Another thing about that is to be concise. These point form notes that you're making should be a one sentence, two sentence type thing where you cut to the chase. No one wants to listen to you say, mm, uh, and come up with other ideas as you're going and then get off track. We say the point, we move on to the next. Step three is to physically arrive to your space feeling confident. Now that could mean that you put on a new blazer. That could mean that you make sure that you steamed your clothes, done your hair, put on lip gloss. And that's where you're gonna actually feel more confident. We know that the clothes make the man and that's no different for being presenting yourself on camera. You're going to feel better. Have you ever ended up at a party and not realized that the dress code was cocktail and you showed up casual? You don't wanna feel that way, right? It's not that you don't wanna walk in and feel out of place. You wanna show up the way that you can. And again, we're trying to control the things that we can control because butterflies are gonna happen. It's going to be there. So the things that we have control over, let's make sure that we've nailed them. Step four takes me back to my days of acting school. It's about getting the jitters out. So no matter what, our energy is gonna manifest itself somewhere. And especially if it's nervous energy, we get a little bit jittery. We start to like look around, glance around, fidget, our palms get sweaty. And we actually physically have some shakes in us. It sounds so silly, but standing with your feet two feet apart and just shaking out or giving yourself a little bit of a shake will actually get the physical jitters out of your body and release that energy. 
Another way to get the jitters out is of course to breathe. There are so many different techniques out there that you can look up, see which one works for you. I'm all about the four in, hold for four, breathe out for six. That's a great way to just bring your blood pressure down and make your physical body feel a lot more calm and collected. Step five comes right along with that. When you're actually in the filming session, make sure that you're standing grounded. If you're standing up, be sure that you're standing with equal weight on both feet. This will make sure that you're not shifting and jittery and you know moving around. Stand really solid and grounded. If you're seated, make sure that you're sitting in a way that you know, you're not gonna be shifting around like this and looking nervous and whatever. That way we can really sit in a position of power and feel that, again, the physical body will trickle, trickle into what we're saying in our words. Number six, keep eye contact. We do this all the time when we're face to face. We know this is one of the best things about body language that we can do to make someone feel seen and heard. So when we're talking to straight to camera, make sure that we're making eye contact because right now I'm making eye contact with you, a person on the other end of this. Number seven, make sure you're speaking slowly, clearly, and concisely. Cut to the chase finish your words, speak slowly, and throw in a little animation. No one wants to hear a monotone conversation about something, even if it's the most boring topic on the world, in the world. You get my point. So make sure that we're starting to emphasize the words that we wanna hit home. We're saying things in a way that keeps people engaged and always maintaining that contact. Another great tip here is to practice the day of, before you actually get going on your content, start speaking to the camera. This is another great way to get out jitters. So if I just sit here and instead of actually jumping into my content with you, I'm gonna explain something to the camera that I will never actually post. An example of this would be explaining what you ate for breakfast. So you can just go to the camera saying, yeah, this morning I woke up and pulled a rice cake out of the cupboard and put some avocado on it and sprinkled up whatever it is because the first words you always say when you're recording come out awkward. So get yourself into a rhythm and a groove with the light in your face, how it is, with whoever's in the room, all those distractions. Make sure that you get those first jitters out saying something that absolutely will not be posted. Number nine, don't be afraid to make mistakes. A lot of us are so concerned about perfection that we hold ourselves back and that, that kind of knee jerk reaction to freeze up is going to cause us some issues when we're trying to speak. When you're speaking to a client or a customer in your own space, you're not hoping, oh shoot, I didn't say that. I want to say it in the other order. Oh shoot, I. You end up just having to say, oh wait, never mind, sorry. And then you can pick up where you left off. Two things about this. One, if you really mess up, you're videoing. Just cut it. The other thing about this is that you can have little blips along the way. It just humanizes it. Do you want to sound like a bumbling idiot? No, of course not. But a little flub up here and there, a trip on the words is okay because it really shows that you're just having a conversation with your audience. Number 10 is a really important thing as far as engagement goes. In the first five seconds, be sure that you use the word you. You, your, or yourself. Big mistake that people make is saying, hi everybody, or welcome folks. That sounds so disingenuous and non-connecting, right? We could be the guy standing in the back row of the theater for all they care. No, I'm talking to you, the viewer. It's one person, maybe two people watching YouTube together. That's not what I'm addressing it as. You should only ever be addressing the one person that is watching it in that live moment. Don't worry about everyone else because there are a different you out there. So make sure that you're speaking directly to people as the individuals that they are. Videos that use the word you or a variation of it in the first five seconds see 68% higher engagement than videos that just jump right into the content or use a general word like folks or everybody. Number 11, jump right into the content. Now, I don't mean don't give context. Absolutely do an intro, tell people what they're there for, tell people what they're gonna get by the end of the video to make sure that they stick around for the end of the video, but be sure to cut right to the chase. You need to cut to the chase to save them that. Why would I wanna watch a 15 minute video for two minutes of quality information that I actually wanted? So cut to that chase. The last tip I'm gonna say goes kind of along with the one where you're speaking directly to that one person. Be sure you're not being condescending. They're here trying to learn from you and you're maybe saying things like, you know, does that make sense? Or do you get it? That's so condescending, right? We don't want to make the viewer feel stupid. We want to make them feel like it's okay that they don't know the thing that they're here to learn. So ask things like, do you have any questions? What kind of feedback do you get from me? 
Did I leave anything out that you're curious about? Those kinds of things let them be feeling like instead of shutting off and feeling talked down to, that they can engage and grow and learn from your area of expertise. Videos have become a huge part of my content strategy, and there's reason for that. Not only has it helped me grow my business, it's also grown my engagement. Not only do I see it on my own broad world channels, but I see this with my clients too. Clients who are willing to put themselves out there speak to and again it can be a simple 15 second instagram story or a video like this where they're actually teaching and engaging it's so important because everyone wants to connect i can't hit this home enough i understand that it's not always easy it was not easy for me at first i look at my original videos and i'm like oh my god but if you were proud of the first thing you put out you launched too late so let's make sure that we're really working that muscle, getting comfortable, and you do it at your own pace. You don't have to step up to the level of YouTube stars out there. Don't worry about that. Get started where you are and get started today. Even if you just go and do a practice video by yourself into the mirror or straight to camera, live your life, go try it. What do you have to lose? If this video was helpful for you, please be sure to like and comment. That really helps me understand exactly what content's helping my audience so I can be sure to come out with more content that's similar and will help propel you forward. If you haven't already done so, please make sure you're following me and subscribe to my channel and ring the little bell to make sure that you get a notification every time I drop a new video. We'll see you here next week.